In this nugget, we're going to go over our deployment options for installing SQL Server in Azure Infrastructure as a Service, so running on VMs up there in the cloud, as well as on-prem, which applies to both bare metal and virtual machines. No matter which environment you deploy SQL Server into, whether it be the cloud or on-prem, you'll need to determine what deployment method you're going to use. Is this going to be a manual deployment? Is it going to be an automatic deployment? And that's something that you'll determine in the planning phase. Manual deployments are good for those one-off instances, as well as special use cases and non-standard installations. Our options for manual deployment include using the wizard, walking through installation graphically, choosing your features, and defining your initial configurations. Another option is using the command line, which you'll need to do if you're on a GUI-less version of Windows, such as Server Core. This is also something you'll need to use if you're using a configuration file. Now, a configuration file will require you to walk through manual installation one time to generate that configuration file, which will contain all of the settings that you define. And you can combine this with the command line and a batch file to automate deployment. Now, configuration files are really useful for coming up with a standard installation. So all of those decisions you made in the wizard, the features you chose, those initial configuration settings, all stored in that file. So you can easily replay an installation using it. So a really useful, very popular feature here that you can use to standardize both manual deployments as well as automatic deployments. Speaking of automatic deployment, we have a couple of options here. One is using sysprep to generate an image of SQL Server. Here's how this works. On the advanced page of SQL Server's Installation Center, we have options for image preparation and image completion, both for cluster and standalone machines. What you'll do first is run image preparation. That'll walk you through the installation wizard where you'll choose your features and again, some common settings. And what that wizard will then do is just simply install the binaries. That's it, it won't perform any configuration at all. And it'll also place a shortcut onto that machine. From there, you'll image the machine, and after you deploy it to other machines, when you stand them up, that shortcut will launch image completion and take you the rest of the way and allow you to configure that specific machine. Our other option for automatic deployment applies to Azure Infrastructure as a Service. We can use templates powered by the Azure Resource Manager to coordinate all of the resources required to automatically spin up in Azure VM. Generating a template in Azure is very similar to generating a configuration file with a typical SQL Server installation. You walk through the wizard in the Azure portal, and at the end of that wizard, you have an option to take all of those decisions you made and turn it into a template. We'll look at that process in greater detail down the road as we have a nugget dedicated to deploying SQL Server using templates. Now, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration here on how to generate and install SQL Server on a server core machine using a configuration file and you'll have an opportunity to do this as well in an upcoming lab. Here we are on SQL Nug and as you can see this is Windows Server with the desktop experience so we're going to use this machine to walk through the wizard graphically and generate that configuration file. Then we're going to take that configuration file over to our server core machine SQL 2 Nug and use it to install SQL Server. So first up here let's head back over to SQL Nug and let's run through setup. Running setup here will launch SQL Server's Installation Center. And from here, we're gonna head down to Installation. Also, I just wanna point out here on the Advanced tab, here's where your image preparation, image completion is. And you can also do an install based on a configuration file here using the wizard. We're gonna head up to the Installation page here, and we're gonna choose New SQL Server Standalone Installation. This will launch us into the wizard. Now, I'm gonna rip through this fairly quick. Developer Edition, accept the license terms, from there, it ran through rules, setup files, and Microsoft Update, and we landed on feature selection. So here we're gonna choose the database engine here, and that looks good. We can also head down here and choose client connectivity tools, so folks can connect to that instance, and everything else here looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and choose next. After validating the rules here, it'll ask us to define our instance configuration. We'll stick with the default instance. We'll hit next here. We'll stick with the defaults here for our service accounts, for database engine configuration here, we'll add the current user, which is the Nugget Lab administrator. We'll leave the defaults here for data directories, tempdb, and file stream. We'll hit next, and that's about it. Now, notice down here on your summary screen, we have the path to the configuration file. So what we're gonna do is head into this path, take this configuration file, I'll place it on the clipboard, and we're gonna copy this over here to SQL to Nug, and I'll put it right in the Nugget Lab directory. 
If we take a peek inside of the configuration file, you'll notice that it's going to contain some options here for the install itself, as well as all of those configurable properties, such as the instance name and the installation directory here for the binaries and everything else that is wrapped inside of the wizard. Now, if we're going to install this or use this configuration file to install SQL Server on Server Core, there is one option here that's going to give you a little bit of grief, and that is UI mode, and we can just simply comment that out. So we'll comment that out there. You can also set it to an option called Enable UI in Server Core, but I haven't had much luck with that option. I've had much better luck just uh, totally commenting it out. So we'll go ahead and save that, and now let's head over to SQL 2 Nug, which is our Server Core machine, where I've already navigated to our directory containing the installation media. So all we need to do here is run setup.exe with a couple of switches. One for quiet mode since we're on Server Core, one to accept the license terms, and the big one here, specifying the configuration file and setting that equal to the path to that configuration file. From here, we can hit enter, sit back and relax as SQL Server installs. Eventually you'll get your command prompt back, which is a sign that installation has completed. Now, if we head back over to SQL Nug, let's verify that it did indeed get installed. We can do so using the file system here. We're over on SQL 2 Nug and the C drive. If we head into Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server, there is the directory for our instance. And if we head into here, this will contain all of the binaries as well as our data directory, log directory, and backup directory. So this looks good. Another way to do it, assuming that you have the firewall configured, is just launch SQL Server Management Studio remotely and connect to the instance. In the CBT Nugget, we covered all of our manual and automatic deployment options for installing SQL Server. And we even saw how to install SQL Server on a server core machine using a configuration file. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.